test also okay uh, okay there's some so we talked about the theory of k bins and hopefully this is somewhat clear and we'll see how we can perform using the software uh, so we have I've written R code and I'm going to show you uh, so what are the strength of k bins well k bins is very simple uh, it's easy to understand um, as you can see it's very easy to understand and very easy to implement and it's also very efficient it's the linear uh, that means when you have large data set the performance is quite important many a times uh, the algorithm uh, can take a lot of time many other algorithm can take a lot of time so this is since this is linear this much this is much uh, better when you have large dimension hence it's very popular but there are some weaknesses as well the algorithm is only applicable if the mean is defined and many times your mean wouldn't be defined especially when you do not have the numeric data in that case you won't have a mean right so uh, a means is not applicable in those cases uh, the user needs to specify k so you uh, you have to be an expert in the data that you are working on that means you should know how many clusters are there in your data you cannot afford to have this uh, uh, you know from your algorithm the clustering algorithm will not tell you how many clusters are there in your data you just have to provide whether it's k2 or 3 or 5 or 6 whatever the algorithm is very sensitive to outliers that means when you have extreme observations or exit observations which are very different from the rest of the observations then or very far away from other data points then the algorithm doesn't perform well we'll take an example to show you how that affects so here is a typical example of k means algorithm not doing well when you have an outlier so here you can see we have set of data points and we have another set of data points okay now if you use claimants clustering algorithm in this case it you know and k equal to 2 let's say it combines these many data points to be cluster 1 and the other data points set of data points to be cluster 2 but ideally this is not a good clustering because one of the data point and this one is far away from the other data point so that data point should have been removed and uh, then we will have got a much better clustering segment here in the second graph you can see if you remove this data point and you know build two cluster you can see a much more clearer clustering a much more uh, you know elegant much more clearer right if you just remove that right but here you can see these data points have been grouped clubbed with this data point which is uh, very far away but yet they are in the same cluster. That doesn't make much of a sense when you try to interpret. So it's very sensitive to outliers. So you should deal with outliers before using clustering. There are methods to uh, deal with outliers. So one method is to remove some of the data points in clustering process that are much uh, farther away from the centroid. That means just remove them, right? The way we did, we just simply remove them. We simply did not use this data point and then the clustering uh, is much better now so that's one way the second way is to take a random sampling when you take a random sample then you will likely to not include many outliers in your sample okay so that the second way of you know handling outliers the algorithm is very sensitive to initial sheet that's another weakness of k-means okay so initial sheet means when you first uh, or the algorithm rather first chooses the initial points that will decide how the clustering will or clustering will happen okay here is a typical example we have taken the same example right so this is one cluster this is another cluster but let's for instance you know the initial data points have been chosen to be somewhere here and some another somewhere here uh, sorry somewhere here the first one the other one will be somewhere here not this one so in that case the first cluster will be this one it will take half of the first one half of the second one and you combine it as a one in the second time also it then you recalculate the centroid and the centroid comes out to be here and then it doesn't change now you can see this is not a proper cluster 
you are getting somewhat of a misleading cluster. Should have been like this one, right? This set of clusters and this set of clusters. So you can see I'm, um, you know, not very clear clustering happening because the initial seed or the data point that was selected wasn't uh, a very appropriate one. So that's uh, a typical issue. You know, this is a much better cluster uh, segments than the other one that we just saw previously. Another important uh, weakness of cl k-means clustering is that it's not very good uh, unless you have hyper uh, uh, you know, cluster segments. For instance, if you can see this one, you know, there is two clear clusters, right? So this one is the cluster. And the other one is this one. Very complicated, very non-linear form of clustering. But, uh, you know, there is a clear cluster. The, clearly, the two different clusters, right? But what it does is that it takes the upper half as one cluster. It takes the lower half as the second cluster. It's not, which is not proper, right? It is not a correct representation. So this is, unless you have, you know, a very, um, you know, clear shape of your data, 